So um, how many times have you been on KBO now on ESPN? Oh, man, like eight, nine times. I don't know. Oh, man. man. So welcome and thanks for joining me. No, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those of you who don't know, Gio, I'm going to let you do a self-introduction, but uh, University of Toronto grad, um, e a frequent uh, guest on ESPN's KBO coverage. Occasional. 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 Okay. <laughs> Eight, nine times. That's pretty yeah. good in a couple of months. Right? Like once a week? Yeah. Uh, no, not quite, but. You know, I've had a couple of appearances get rained out, actually, oh, if you can okay. believe that. Um, so, so, yeah, we were around eight or nine times since, uh, since the start of the season in May. So, it's not too bad. And, of course, uh, Yonhap Sports, um, yep. staple for many years, covering baseball. Primarily baseball, but a lot of other sports, too, right? Yeah, baseball is the number one sport in Korea. So, that's obviously where my, uh, my bread is buttered. Um, but I do the, the football, the real football, you know, not the American style. Soccer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest of the world golf. Goes with football. Yeah, I do a bit of a golf, uh, a lot of amateur sports during, around and during the Olympics and, and also the Asian Games. And yeah, but uh, yeah, baseball has been uh, the main beat for many years now. So um, why don't you tell the, the guests here a little bit about yourself and your your first language is Korean. We're, you know, mm -hmm. this is um, part of this is going to be from my textbook about learning baseball English. Yeah. And um, so your first language is Korean, but you've, you know, your English is a very high level of English and, and not only general English, but technical English too, technical baseball English as well. And, and how did you get to that point? You know, I was very lucky enough to spent a few years, a few years in Toronto, Canada, uh, three years of high school and four years of university studying uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. um, so I did obviously all the education before that point in Korea, uh, but I was always interested in English, the language, even growing up in Korea. So I, I had taken a lot of interest in the language and I grew up a fan of baseball, a uh, fan of a lot of sports, but baseball, I play baseball. Uh, I was put into it from a very young age. And you know how a lot of uh, words and terms in baseball are just natural English. So even in Korean baseball, there's certain terms that there's no Korean equivalent right. of the specific term, right. right? Like something like something as basic as mound or like home plate, and of a lot of other things uh, that. Uh, you know, I can't really think of it off the top of my head, but there's so many things that are just natural English, right? So if you read my PhD, which I'll send you a copy, <laughs> there, yeah. I did do a study um, and I looked at, I tested Korean amateurs and Japanese amateurs on their knowledge yeah. of baseball English spoken words. And it turned out that um, Korean, Korean baseball mm -hmm. had about 60% coverage of the words on the list. Mm -hmm. And Japanese was about forty percent. So yeah, there was, um, and then there were some, there were some historic reasons that it was, you know, not more English because there was a certain time in Korean history where there was a, a Koreanization of the language, and I think right. people veered more towards using Korean than English. Mm -hmm. And then in Japan during the war, World War II, English was pretty much banned from being used, even though they had used baseball English before. So they came up with some of their own words. But anyhow, there's a, there is a relationship there. So you may have known more baseball English if there wasn't this period where Koreanization took place with the language. Maybe, maybe. maybe. And a, maybe. Lot of, a lot of the terms that I think, there are some terms that Korea maybe picked up from Japan. Mm. Uh, like right. something like Turn. hit by pitch. Uh, when I was growing up, we used to call it dead ball. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a completely different thing, right? If his ball is dead. Right. That's not a hit by pitch. Yeah, I not, mean, if the ball is dead after yeah. somebody's but Yeah, after, after yeah. Or, or whatever, right? It's a completely different thing. But when I was growing up, we didn't know hit by pitch. It was a dead mm. ball. Just dead uh, ball. Yeah. And based on balls and walk, uh, it was like always four ball, you know, as in po' boy, you know? 
Yeah. I, I think we got to come to How about fastball? Fastball is used in. Yeah, yeah. Fastball is yeah. chip go, right? Right. As in like straight pitch. Right. And so Japanese think, call it straight. Yeah, straight. So, yeah. We, mm -hmm. it's a literal translation into Korean with a chip go, right? Uh, even to this day, uh, I think there's a there's been a, some bit of a movement to call it just fastball, as in the basketball or fastball, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but in some cases, you'll still see like jiko, like ERA, uh, it was like pangoyu, as in like literal translation might be like you know save percentage or defensive whatever percentages, but you know it's not quite earned run average. So there 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 are a few things that Korea picked up from Japan when the game of baseball, uh, especially at the professional level, uh, took its roots in Korea. Well, that'd be an interesting book, uh, learning Korean baseball, right? Or, or learning, uh, well, baseball English, uh, baseball Korean, right? Terms and, and phrases that are just specific for, for Koreans. This would be valuable for anybody who wants to come over and play in the, in the KBO or KBO fans. Yeah. So, have you thought about writing this book? <laughs> nah, I, you know, I've, yeah, I used to do back in way back when, a few years back, I, I ran a sort of a small, like, mini blog series on learning English from Major League Baseball articles. So, I would, mm -hmm. like, you know, pick some random baseball story of the day and, like, maybe highlight some vocabulary, highlight some expression, and explain what it meant in Korean to specifically to Korean audience. But uh, other way around, I don't know. I haven't, haven't, uh, haven't thought about that. Was well, a market for it now? I mean, you have what four foreigners on every team? Every, every three, uh, three, three, three plus. Uh, I think starting next year, they could also sign somebody to develop in the minor league. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess four in the system, but uh, right. three in the three in the big team. So and plenty of expats who oh, yeah. who follow the KBO, yeah. teachers and military yeah. and business people. So mm -hmm. I, I do see a market for, maybe we can work on this after I finish my other book <laughs> sure. and my documentary. By the way, Gio is the star of the uh, trailer for my documentary. I am, eh? <laughs> it's got about three scenes in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, and if the documentary ever comes out, which is now, ancient, I don't think it's on uh, black and white. <laughs> I <laughs> shot it so long ago. Yeah. Uh, you will see him in that more. But no, that was a, I thought that was a really cool time for, for KBO fans and the KBO when I was. You were a little ahead of your time, man. With, with what? With the, with the whole, the, the, the premise of the documentary. Mm, yeah. No, I mean, what, my point is, I, I think maybe last year and, you know, this year with COVID, uh, there are no fans, but maybe last year just kind of, you know, with all the ESPN broadcast. Right, KBO I wish I released it that. years yeah, ago. No, like, yeah, so maybe I would have been on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is, I was just, the thing that stuck out to me the most was the net, you know, that goes from foul pole to foul pole. Oh, the safe and netting? Yeah. yeah, and now you have that in MLB as yep. of a couple of years ago. Not as high, right? Mm -hmm. But you have net safety netting, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, back in the 80s, uh, a lot of drunken fans would climb <laughs> over the fence. You know, it was some you know, wild going, times, yeah. Oh, yeah, going to games as a, like, 89 years old myself, uh, I witnessed a lot of uh, those drunken, you know, grown-ups. Fires on the mound and, and oh, yeah, fires team mound, buses uh, trashed. Team buses <laughs> getting trashed and burned. Uh, there's, a, like, riot taking place, riot breaking out on the field. Uh, umpires like, getting, getting assaulted. Oh, yeah, umpires getting uh, hammered. <laughs> you don't see that Taking, anymore, right? No, like you it don't was even too wild. See, you don't even see. Do you even see in KBO many umpire manager fights anymore? I mean, part of it oh, is no, no, no. replay, right? Okay. Look, yeah. look. You, you 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 talk to an umpire, you get you get tossed. Wow. You get tossed. You, you, yeah. You, you, so much you say a word, a player. Or so much you say as a word, he gets tossed, man. So you can just. But you know, people have grown up, <laughs> so. No, no more uh, wild times uh, in the KBO. Those are the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> so um, covering KBO, we are talking yeah. during the pandemic now. It's uh, September uh, 14th, 14th? Yep. Yeah, 14th. 2020. Uh, how, is it, how has your job changed? You know, uh, 
present times, I have not gone to a ballpark for about three weeks now mm. because of one, I, I think first week I kind of stayed home for my personal choice because I, you know, two young ones at home. Sure. There, was a, there was a spike in COVID-19 cases after a period of very stable curve, I guess. Uh, it went from double figures to like two or 300, 400-ish. And then I didn't want to kind of take that risk. And then a week after that, there was like a company-wide directive to stay home uh, mm. for the time being. So, so, that was, so that's that. For early in the year, um, I guess in terms of just the working environment, uh, no fans, right? And no direct access to individual players. So, like in MLB, the clubhouses are open. In the KBO, the clubhouses are off limits, mm -hmm. uh, but we can, we, we we are generally able to get to dugouts before and after games. To it's kind of free for all. You can grab players for you know one on ones, or if there's a couple of reporters who want maybe want to talk to the same player. There's a bit of a mini scrum form being formed. The managers you know have their sessions in the dugouts, but none of that happening this year because of COVID-19 because of all the distancing guidelines so uh, right now the, the protocols are being that uh, we get to manage of the home team two hours before the game mm -hmm. and uh, manager from the visiting team uh, on that half hour after that in the press conference room and maybe we get a player from either the home team or visiting team maybe maybe not not all the time and that's it Mm. That's the access that, the access that we have. It's, your so, job is much more difficult. It's more difficult, I guess, in a way. I guess in some ways it's easier because you know we, we're just kind of being spoon-fed players mm -hmm. and our sources, mm -hmm. right? We're well, just that's good. Around. The league's you know, been in, league's been helpful. Yeah, they're bringing players and you know they're bringing managers. So mm. for our first two months of the season, it was only the managers, and then maybe right. the player of the game afterward from the winning side, and then after about a couple of months they started bringing players pregame too. So that kind of made it a little easier in terms of producing stories. But for the longest time, it was just talking to managers before games. And that's, you know, that's, that gets kind of old, right? Because some of the managers, they don't, you know, they don't really enjoy talking to the media. Right, um, maybe they don't give you much. Yeah, and some of the yeah. managers, they, they actually like talking too much. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to... How about the got, manager from Kia? He's a foreigner. Matt uh, Williams, right? Yeah, Matt Williams. Yeah, he's, uh, I've, I've covered him a few, couple of times. Uh, he's kind of very MLB-ish in terms of sticks his cliches and right. doesn't say a lot. Uh, you know, he's, 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 he, he's been an all-star. He's managed at the level before. Is he so picking he up not, some Korean is, or Korean baseball not terminology? Not that I know. Not that I know. Not, no, okay. No. He's got his translator with him the whole time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the same translator that uh, worked with uh, Sim Wan Oh with the, okay. uh, the Cardinals. Oh, okay. Yeah, Eugene, uh, Eugene Koo. Anyway. Right. Yeah, I remember so, that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, yeah, Matt Williams, uh, he's kind of not all that interesting, I would say. Um, mm. But in that setting, in that controlled environment, it's hard to be uh, kind of, you know, open and engaging. You know what I mean? How was he dealing with COVID or any of the foreign players dealing with it? Uh, you know, it's, it's a little different than in the U.S. Uh, I think there's like daily testing going on, right? Mm -hmm. in MLB or very frequent testing. Over here, uh, they don't get tested every day, but they have to like report the temperatures, their, any symptoms if they have, they have, to, they have to report them right away. They get mm -hmm. their temperatures checked coming in every day into the ballpark. And there's only so been they, a few any, players, right, that have, that have tested positive? Two. Two. Are they yeah, in a two. bubble? Are they, so they go no, from a bubble? it's not a bubble. Not a bubble. Not a bubble. They can go no. home? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What that, about when they're they, on the road? Cause oh, they have to stay they, in the hotel. They have to stay in the hotel, okay. Yeah, it was a little loose. It's a little looser mm -hmm. early in the year, but uh, after the two positive tests, that was in the Hanwha right. Eagles system, minor leaguers. So it got tight. The KBO tightened things up a little, little bit, so they have to stay in the hotel unless it's absolutely necessary to go out. Um, so no like group dining, no like post game beers with the guys after right. the game. So, right, just hanging out in so, the rooms. And... Yeah, kind of staying low and stay mm -hmm. trying to stay safe. Yeah, the new normal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So are there any Korean players you can think of who have tried to speak English with their foreign teammates? Uh, many stories yeah, like I did a story on this. Mm -hmm. I did a story on this once when Addison Russell came over. Uh, He's there now, uh, right? He's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, the heroes? When he came over with the heroes, mm -hmm. uh, Pyeong Ho Park, mm -hmm. the former Minnesota Twins. Sure. Yeah. So he speaks a little English. He's, he adds. He's tried not, too. I've, yeah, it's, 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 so he it's tries. not so much, yeah, it's not so much his, I was going to say, it's not so much the proficiency, but it's just that, it's that he tries. Mm -hmm. he, he, he goes out of his own, he, he goes out of his ways to talk to those foreign players. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when Edison Russell came, out, came over, Park was really the guy that really stepped up, stepped up to kind of take him under his wing. Okay. And like I was there for Russell's first game and he was like, he delivered like pretty key head in late innings. He was like the player of the game. So we had, we had the post game interview with him. And he said, you know, Park is like his big brother. Oh, cool. Uh, and there was like a week or whatever after he joined the team. So, uh, you know, I mean, he, do he does have a couple of um, foreign pitchers, but it's kind of different, right? They're pitchers and he's, he's a position player. Their routine is a little different. Uh, yeah. Whereas Pyong Ho, they're, they're both infielders, right? First baseman and shortstop. So they're going to they're gonna have to talk a lot anyway. And then for, for Pyong Ho, for Park to kind of take the, you know, role as sort of the leader, uh, it, was, it was good to see. But I, I can't think of anybody else who actually would have wow. kind of over the years, of over the years, you haven't seen? No, no. I mean, not in, not in recent years. Yeah. No, I've heard stories about some of the older players. This is before I became a writer who would kind of try to engage for players in the conversations, maybe only to learn English themselves, right? But in recent years, I haven't really heard any. So yeah. uh, for the Korean players and the Korean uh -huh. teams, do they facilitate any baseball English learning classes or even general English learning classes? No, not that I know of. Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, but uh, like yourself, and there's translators, um, mm -hmm. even umpires, maybe that do international competition. Um, have you run across many baseball specialists, front office people? Um, most of them, would you say, have studied in North America, or how have they been able to get those jobs? Because that's not too easy to get. Yeah, I mean, people in positions where they have to handle international affairs. Yeah, they've, for the most part, they've studied abroad, mm -hmm. US or other like English speaking countries, I would say. Um, I don't know too many of them personally, but I know there are a few like uh, Indiana University grads in front mm -hmm. offices in the KBO. Uh, there's some scouts or like analytics guys who have studied abroad. Uh, I know for the fact, for a fact that the heroes have, they're head of their analytics. I think he spent a lot of time in New York for one. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of guys in, I think in the LG front office who've been, who've studied abroad. Uh, so things like that. Yeah. So, but they're very specific. They have very specific responsibilities, right? Handling like uh, international affairs. Maybe they have partnerships with major league teams. Like heroes have partnerships with the I think Boston Red Sox during right. a few years back. I don't know if they still do, but they have a at least they signed a deal with the Red Sox to have some sort of partnership. So yeah, so people who have responsibilities like that, they're they're very specific toward you know language requirements. Yeah, those people are mostly from like or spend some time in the US. Now players who've gone over Korean players who've gone over to the States to play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever gotten into it with them or done any stories on them on how oh, yeah. they've, you know, how they learned English or baseball English or how the they The thing is, a lot, of them, a lot of them didn't stay long enough to actually pick up any, a lot of English, mm. you know what I mean? Like, Pyeong Ho was there for two years, but, you know, the second season was entirely in the, in the minors in Rochester. That's where so, probably where he would have to, you know, uh, language immerse terms. himself more, right? Yeah. You figure? In the minors, right? Did he have a Did he have a translator in the minors? In, no, I don't think they give you one in the minors. No, I don't think so. But he was injured most of the time, so I don't think he played a lot even. Right. Yeah. right. And then uh, guys like Hyunsoo Kim 
I mean, he was there for two years, but he, he barely played for the second year. Uh, like Jae Gyun Hwang, Giants, uh, again, he barely played. Mm-hmm. He came back after one season. Dae Lee was with the, the Mariners. He yeah, did a translator there. He played mm-hmm. one season where he came back. So a lot of the guys that have gone, they left KBO, uh, just came back after a season or two. Right. Uh, even time. someone like Hyunjin Ryu, he's, you know, this is like eighth year in the majors. Yeah. He's still, he's got translator uh, with, with, the, with the Blue Jays. And I mean, he, you know, he can communicate. He can, yeah. he can talk to his teammates. Uh, he can talk to his catchers. How about Ch- Chan Ho Park? I've had conversations. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, you know, Chan yeah. English is okay. Um, yeah, I've I've done like uh, some sort of a webinar with him on it. Uh, he can you know he can carry in conversations, no problem. Yeah, uh, but he went, he was there forever. And let's see, yeah. So those those first generation since guys. Since Chu, since Yeah, she, I mean she's a Chu. He's like he's yeah. been there since like triple A, double A, right? He mm-hmm. he's signed out of high school. He's been there since two thousand. 99 or 2000 ish yeah right so rookie ball right he started yeah pretty much yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so like but jiman Choi with tampa he also signed out of high school he does still doesn't have a translator though like mm-hmm. chu doesn't he doesn't need one but jiman Choi, he can uh, i think he can communicate a little bit i haven't heard him speaking with tampa now right tampa yeah yeah yeah, tampa, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. but he, he does have a translator with, yeah. with the rays and he's he was signed out of high school yeah, he did. Well, they get now MLB teams require minor leaguers who are non native English speakers to take English classes. So, okay. And maybe it's like that the last few years. Okay. Yeah. So, but um, so on the flip side, have you ever seen any foreign yeah. players in the KBO who've really gone after it and picked up the language, immersed themselves, even maybe even took classes or anything in, in, I think in Korean was, language? Uh, uh, his name escapes me. Uh, former Lotte Giants pitcher. Uh, oh, Ryan Sadowski. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, he was Ryan, like Ryan writing. Sadowski. Yeah, he was, he was like writing tweeting in Korean. And yeah. Every, yeah. yeah, he was tweeting in Korean. What a, right? amazing! What yeah. an anomaly! Huh? Yeah, so he he's the one guy that sticks out. And, yeah. Uh, so this year, interestingly, this year we have a lot of new faces, and mm-hmm. the one guy who's really kind of throwing himself into the Korean culture and all that, Dan Dan Straley. With the yeah, Giants. Pitcher, right? Yeah, pitcher. Mm-hmm. Dan Straley. Mm-hmm. Former uh, Red, uh, Oakland A. Uh, you know, he's, he's bounced around. Anyway, so he's... He's into really, it. Huh? He's in. He's all in. Oh, he's all in. He's yeah. like... I remember interviewing him before the season. And he's like, you know, I did You know, KBO didn't choose me. I, I came... Oh, I, oh, I, KBO didn't come to me. I came to the KBO. So it's, it's all on me to, you know make myself part of this league instead of kind of trying to force my way into whatever. So he was ready. My, he, his mindset was, you know, I'm here. I might as well just, you know, embrace this culture and however, however different it might be. Uh, so here's a guy who's making t-shirts with the photos of his Korean teammates, you know, trying to, trying to cheer them up. Um, it's become like collector's items on, uh-huh. on, on the market. Uh, he goes out and like, you know, takes his cat, young catchers under his wings, even though they, they don't speak the same language. Uh, so he's the one guy that sticks out for me. Um, and uh, other guys that have been around a few years, uh, Tyler Wilson and Casey Kelly, two pitchers for the LG Twins. Uh, so so they, they kind of know what's going on. This is, the, I think, their third, third season together or yeah. second season together. Um, yeah, so some the, coaches have been there a while. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, Brandon. Um, yeah, Brandon. Brandon Knight. Brandon yeah. Knight, yeah. If you count his uh, like playing days, he's been here for like a decade almost. Right? Yeah. So, so and he, I think uh, he, he can understand. A well, lot he understands a lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah, especially the, the baseball. Yeah. So I know I, I realize a lot of the guys that are coming over here now, they're a little more open minded mm-hmm. than maybe some of the players that have that came before them. A few years back. We got people who are more motivated to come now. Now this is kind yeah. of a waiting list, right? It's not like yeah. They're, they're not pulling any, twisting anybody's arm to come over anymore. So it used to be guys were playing out the string in KBO, mm-hmm. but now it's kind of like a stepping stone. Yeah, it's yeah, a like mid, mid, mid-career type of move. Yeah, 
Like like Josh, Josh Lindblom, right? Josh Lindblom went back. Mm-hmm. Murray Kelly. Actually, ne- Kelly never even pitched in the majors before he came to the KBO. Right. So he signed a major league deal when he, when he, when he went back to the States. Yeah, you, like you said, the guys are more motivated to do well in the KBO. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different. A lot different than... I'd say like in the last, what, four or five years that's changed or maybe even yeah, sooner. pretty much. Five, yeah. five, six years, I would say, yeah. 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 So... Um, you've covered, like you said before, international events in, in baseball, in baseball and other sports yeah. and hopefully the Olympics eventually. Uh, well, I think it's going to happen next summer. Yeah. I've done, uh, I've done two summer and one winter Olympics. These are the winter in Pyeong, Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang. Yeah. Yeah. Pyeongchang, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in your opinion, how significant is English skills for the athletes and, and all those involved? in the Olympics. Oh man, you know what? That's very important. I, I can't I can't stress it enough because mm. you know that's the universal language, right? In an international sporting uh, events. Yes. So all the, the interviews lingua the franca if in oh, yeah. academic terms. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean with the with the with the IOC, French being the other I guess official language with the with the Olympic movement, you can if you speak French, uh, you can I guess for the lack of a better term, you can get by. But mm-hmm. if you don't speak English, uh, it's a little more difficult because they don't give you translators in the mix zones. Uh, press conferences, yeah, maybe. Uh, but it's different, right? When, you can express, when you're able to express yourself in their language, it's a lot easier than having it go through someone else. And I've, I, you know, it's funny you ask that because I've noticed that a lot in recent years of being in the Asian Games and Olympics. The international athletes who speak English as the second language, who are, who are able to conduct interviews in, that, in English, uh, you know, they get a lot more coverage too. You know what I mean? Mm. They get more exposed and they, they get to showcase, them, showcase themselves a little more because they're able to speak the language. So they get more stories written about them. They get interviewed more. They get, they get on TV more, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, and then, you know, that can so, lead to yeah. endorsements. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. Or- Success, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, world-class caliber Korean athletes in different sports who could be stars, who could be like, you know, have like star quality, but, you know, they have the language barrier. They can, mm. they haven't been able to overcome. Whereas athletes from maybe some other parts of Asia, some parts of Europe, uh, they've got the language down, um, you know, that it's, it's, the, it's their advantage for them. So, yeah, I, I think it's very important uh, to answer your question. Well, I'm hoping you're, you'll go to the Olympics uh, next summer. Or oh, I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not holding my, uh, I'm not yeah. holding my breath on that. <laughs> well, what's the word now? It's going to happen, right? Regardless well, thing of is, fans or not? No, I, I don't think they're going to commit one way or the other. It's too mm-hmm. early, right? It's about 10 months out. It's hard to predict. You're going to do it in July, same time? Is that- yeah, same time, mm-hmm. same date, same period. Uh, yeah. Just one year later, right? I mean, I love Tokyo. It's so it. hot though at that time. That's just I know it's wrong, crazy. It's the wrong time yeah. to have it. I mean, I know Seoul's hot too, but Tokyo might yeah, be hot. No, Tokyo's different hot. <laughs> different hot than Seoul. And I, it's a I've concrete jungle, July. right? So yeah. it's, it's just the heat's radiating off the street to the buildings. You're just melting. And the humidity's, oh, man. Yeah. Well, they already had to move the uh, marathon up to Sapporo. They have, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that was. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for taking some time out here. One last thing that we didn't sure. discuss is uh, the passing of Neil Peart. Very sad. And his birthday was the other day, us both being Rush fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we lost Neil this year, January 7th. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, because you mentioned Rush, and uh, there's a guy, a baseball player, Caleb Joseph. I don't know if he rings the bell. He was yeah, I've heard actor. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, so yeah. oh wait, my, my, Toronto, yeah. right? He was playing yeah, the drums. Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, playing yeah. Radio. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That was so great. So was um, <laughs> it was on a story in the Athletic, uh, and the writer is a friend of mine. Uh, I met her during spring training. Anyway, so there was a great story how he would do like air drums on to to the Rush song songs, and he would you know, some of the, there were some of the other classic rock bands in the team. They were like really amazed at how actually accurate. 
that guy was just doing air drums on some of the songs by Rush and he built like a makeshift drum set with like yeah yeah buckets like some baskets and, yeah, the buckets, yeah. yeah exactly right and, uh, and the you know, whole team was watching him he put on if you're, like a if you're watching um, if you're watching some of the Jays games at home in Buffalo in the alternate home in Salem Field we have the cardboard cutouts right and Gary Lee has a yes in the, yeah have you seen that I he's saw got, he was sitting right next to Governor Cuomo the other night. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got a Cuomo was suit. in a suit. Yeah. 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 Cuomo yeah. Was suit. But he's a staples uh, at Rogers Center, right? I mean, he, he goes yeah, to he's a, he's a big fan. fair share of games. Oh, yeah, he's a big fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I miss them. I mean, I'm glad I got to see them quite often, but I think I took it for granted every time. And then that was it. Yeah. But, you know, there's supposed to be a tribute for Neil in um, – near where he's from St. Catharines. St. Catharines, yeah. And it got moved. It was supposed to be May of uh-huh. this year, then October. Now it's set for or scheduled, rescheduled for April of next year. Okay. So we'll see what happens mm-hmm. with COVID. But I'm pretty sure Getty and, and uh, Alex are going to perform along with a lot of other big time mm-hmm. Rush fans who are musicians like Nirvana, uh, not Nirvana, uh, Foo Fighters. So, but, um, was there anything else we missed here that you want to talk about specifically with baseball English and Korea and language and how important it is or anything jumps no, out? No, I think we're good. Okay, cool. I think we're good. Cool. But, uh, it's good seeing you. You look, you look yeah. good, man. I see on TV, you know, quite <laughs> often now. It's kind thanks, of cool. Yeah, I mean, thanks, man. I'm surprised you haven't, you know, moved into a mansion now with all those checks that are coming. <laughs> no, I... I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's purely voluntary, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would. Pay, have, I would have to pay to get on air, man. No, you did great. You do great. <laughs> you, you you really do. And our buddy Thomas St. John even snuck yep. uh, snuck in there. Oh yeah, I set him up for that actually. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah with your article. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And. When you come over here, let me know, okay? I, I hope, you know. We'll do that, hopefully for the Olympics. Yeah, hopefully yeah. for the Olympics. Okay, and hopefully I'll be involved with, the, yeah. doing, you know, going in, in some capacity. Yeah. All right? Okay. Well, take, take it easy, man. All the best to the family. You too, man. Thanks. Take care, Gio. Bye. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Yeah.